Welcome back, Shalligators. The holidays are behind us. The new year is upon us. I've got some really fun content coming your way for the new year, like some glow up video series. Tell me some glow up topics you would like to see down in the comments. But you know what? We'll talk about that in a minute. I want to talk today about Demi Lovato because she's engaged again. Yes, again. And you know, we like love to hate Demi around here because she's just such a clown lord. Like it's one documentary after another being like, this time I'm sober. Oh, that last documentary when I said I was sober? No, I was lying. This is the truth. 18 months from now, I will do another documentary saying I'm lying now because I'm clearly not sober. On and on and on, the cycle goes on. And there's just always some drama with her. And it's always like, again, like a clown lord drama. Like she's at an ice cream store freaking the fuck out because they have sugar-free food, okay? And she's triggered by that because she's like, what, anorexic, are you? Okay. And of course, to me, her biggest clown move of all was saying she has like no gender, that she's a they, them, zuzu, gigog, fey, whatever. Why are people doing this? What is the psychology behind a they, them? Because this is a horrible social contagion and trend that has infected the highest echelons of Hollywood, right? You have people like Demi Lovato and Halsey, who to me are like two peas in a manic pod. They're not stable people. They don't strike me as sober people, like historically aggregate over the, their entire lifetime. And interestingly, they all veered towards this, this thing. What does this mean? Why are people doing this? I'm gonna break down the psychology behind this non-binary whatever and you know I've spoken about it here and there sprinkled into videos because I think it's ridiculous but we're actually going to get to the psychological root of it and what motivates people like Demi not just to be like I'm a I'm a bark slash wolf or whatever they're coming up with but why people I think especially kind of millennials and Gen Z I mean boomers are their own plague upon life what is motivating people to kind of manufacture these sorts of dramas where is this coming from? What truly is it that we're looking for when we gravitate towards these kind of, in my opinion, very extreme behaviors? And is Demi actually on the path to being happy now? Is there something about this relationship, despite her other previous relationships, like that weird, weird guy, Max, who she got engaged, that was a whole fiasco. Is this one actually gonna work out? No, okay. Maybe, I don't know, we're gonna break it all down. <laughs> but before we get started, listen. If you are in need of a community of your own and you don't wanna like act like you don't have a vagina and be super weird in order to find a niche community, you can be part of my niche community because it's a community of bad bitches. Join the Chalantrage. It's five bonus videos a week we do. We don't really talk about celebrities. We do like informational advice deep dives. I talk about my life, I do a lot of crying give you some advice about everything. We have a lot of glow up advice coming for the new year and more than anything, like I said, it's a community. So let's just jump into it. What is up with Demi? Okay, so she is engaged to a guy named Jordan Lutz who goes by Jutes. Do you get it? Cause Jordan, it's J and then Lutz. Jutes. Yeah, I get it. I have issues with men with nicknames. I mean, he's in the music industry, so it's like different, but is it? I mean, if your friend said, yeah, I'm dating Kix and you're like, who? Kix. Do you mean Dennis who lives up the street and works at Jiffy Loop? Like, yeah, we call him Kicks. Nobody fucking calls him that. And even if they do, that's actually honestly worse. So he is a music producer slash song write person. And they met apparently in a music session, like in a studio session. He is lanky, which means he has a pretty big penis, I would imagine. And they've been dating for a year. They got engaged. I just need to read the caption of something he posted about her. It, it was for her birthday in August. Okay, she turned 31 in August and he posted this caption. The caption itself is sweet. If it had been written by an adult, it would be even sweeter. What do I mean by this? The grammar. You guys, grammar doesn't fucking lie. To me, grammar is a barometer of a man's maturity. And I'm going to pronounce this in the way that I feel the spirit of the piece. So when I say, ooh, that means he just wrote, instead of Y-O-U, he wrote just the U. And all the I's are lowercase. So alternative. Whoa, you're such a rebel. Do you know that it's harder 
to write a lowercase i. Your phone autocorrects it to an uppercase i. You're like, no, 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 backspace, lowercase. Your heart has changed lives all over the planet. Especially some dude. Okay, right there. We need a, another word. Especially the heart of somebody. Especially some dude from a farm in Canada who wound up in your session over a year ago. I didn't know the perfect person existed till I met you. But now that I do, I'm gonna spend the rest of my life protecting you and doing whatever I can to squeeze another smile and belly laugh out of you. I couldn't be more proud to call you my baby. I don't want anything to do with this person. I don't want anything to do with this person. That man could come to me with a diamond that requires its own wheelbarrow. Get the fuck, get the fuck away from me. I don't care if you have a 12 inch dick and it's covered in diamonds, get it away from me. I don't want it. I don't want it. If my boyfriend, who is young, he's very, Gen Z, if my boyfriend posted that, I'd be like, I need you to go in and fix that fucking caption right now. Run it through Grammarly, run it through ChatGPT. I don't care. I will run it through the FBI if I have to because you should get arrested for writing that. You know how I am about words and grammar. It is sweet though. But to me, I bring this up, not just to shred his terrible grammar. That isn't husband grammar. Do you know what I mean? If I would see that and I had no context and you're like, how old is this person? I would say, I don't know, 15 or 16 or like a drunk 19. I wouldn't be like, that's a man ready to make a lifetime commitment. That's a man who understands what it means. Am I being nitpicky and being a hater? Yeah, welcome to this channel. Welcome to my horrible life. I am Blair Wald Waldorf in real life, okay? Get the fucking memo. I'm the crazy bitch around here. But then again, I think about Demi. And I'm not getting much more maturity there. Do you know what I mean? So in, it's not like, oh, he's, he's proposed to Nancy Pelosi. Like he's proposed to somebody who probably is kind of his equal. Let's break down what we know about Demi. As you guys, if you've watched this channel for a while, you know the shred campaign I have gone on about Demi's documentaries with her drug use and how she never ever seemed serious about being sober. There was never a shred of apology. Her friends seemed all weird and drugged out. And of course the galvanized example is that she had a shroom room in her house, a room themed as if you were on mushrooms. What the fuck kind of sober person puts a room like that in their house? My, you know the analogy, if you had someone who claimed they were trying to lose 100 pounds and they had a donut room in their house and it was just full of candy, but oh, I don't, I don't eat the candy. You'd be like, what? What kind of weird fetishistic behavior is this? Like, of course you eat, what is, no. This is not what a, a person losing weight would do and that's not what a sober person would do, okay? And then of course, the pronouns, the pronouns, the pronouns. If you have watched my channel for a long time, you have watched my evolution from a very liberal person into someone who, I'm not a Republican, but I am what I would call awake, which is interesting that we have the word woke to signify the like insane, rabid, mouth foaming left. There is woke, and then there is someone who's like, oh, hold on. <laughs> What? And you're just starting to see the truth of things. And what I look at first in terms of truth is almost always psychology. What is the psychology behind something? Because we as a society, we as individuals, it's very easy just to look at behaviors. In the last video I did, we were talking about Christmas and how it seems like everyone's having this perfect Christmas and oh my God, I'm the only one. Girl, no, 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 no. You're responding to someone's social mask. Okay, that's what you're responding to. We are all projecting. We must, as alpha females, and my gays, my alpha males, we must go beyond what we see, the optics, the behaviors, and certainly, ironically, beyond the statements people make to see what is underneath that, to see what's actually going on. And so when I see someone being like, I'm a they, I'm like, what the fuck is happening beneath the surface? Let me dig. Now there's blood in the water for someone like me. So the other thing we know about Demi is that when she's not talking about drugs, she's talking about how fat she is or how fat she feels or how fat she used to be or how not fat she is or how she has a healthy relationship with food or how she doesn't, blah, 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 blah. It's, it is all 
focused on her body. And I'm not denying that she had an eating disorder. I mean, she was a child star, like of course, like the toxic messaging, she probably got, Ugh, I can't even imagine. But I also do not think she is special because she's had an eating disorder. Welcome to being a woman? I, I, as a sorority girl, I don't know anybody who doesn't have some issues with food. Now at this point in my life, people have worked them out or they have simply leaned into them so hard, they don't even consider them issues anymore. They're just fat or they're just anorexic and like super disordered with their eating or they just work out eight times a week, you know? It's just not even a disorder. It's just, well, this is just who I am. I never took care of it. And so it just, bleh, it just mushroomed into oblivion. And I think it's interesting that when Demi was at her fattest, she suddenly didn't have a gender anymore. Suddenly she was a they, them. And now that she's thin, probably with Ozempic, which, hey, I no shade there. Do whatever you need to do to feel your best, to be the most sane version of you, to be healthy, whatever, who cares? Do it, take, I don't care. But now that she's thin, suddenly she's back to she. That's interesting. That to me says it all with the psychology of the non-binary. This says it all. People who feel ugly, and I say feel ugly because listen, first of all, ugly is extremely changeable. It's extremely changeable. Have you tried makeup? Have you tried face masks, some facials? Have you tried the gym? Have you tried the gym? Have you tried changing your posture? Buying clothes that fit, bleaching your teeth, having two eyebrows and zero mustache. Just try it. When people feel so ugly that they feel like it's this insurmountable hill, like they can never look pretty or compete in that arena, they remove themselves from, from the specter of the arena altogether. I never see an attractive person who says they're a they, them, not ever. I don't see someone who takes pride in their appearance and their hygiene who says that they're a they, them. Sorry, I don't, I don't. When you feel good about yourself, you feel good all the way through. People who are using these insane pronouns feel bad about themselves. Why is this important to note? Because it is not real then. This is actually not a real thing. It's not real. You have a vagina or you have a penis. You get one or the other. And if you don't like that, if you don't like the penis, go out and buy a vagina. I don't care. But you don't get to lurk someplace in the middle with this mental delusion and assume that the rest of us are going to buy into it. I, for one, am not. I can say, you know what? I feel a lot like a lawyer. I can make a good argument and I look so good in those little suits. I wanna be a lawyer. <laughs> Let me into the Supreme Court. No one is going to do that. Why? Because I'm delusional and no one else feels the need to participate in that. Did you see the Barbie movie? Do you remember when Ken goes to the hospital and he's like, I feel like I should get to be a doctor. And she's like, no. Let me just do one appendectomy. No, I wanna to talk to a doctor. You are talking to a doctor. The reason that scene is so funny is because Ken is delusional and that's not how being a doctor work. Guess the fuck what? It's not how anything works, including your gender. And if you are a non-binary person and you think that smart people can't see how insane you are, I'm so sorry, you're wrong. You're wrong. So now you are unattractive or you feel unattractive, which means that you are, because look, we all know around here, the secret to being a hot girl is simply deciding that you are one. And so if you carried yourself like a hot bitch, Great, you would be one, but you have elected not to and therefore, okay, fine, you're not one, sure. I'll buy into that. But you have added on top of this delusionality and entitlement and an aggression that you're forcing upon the rest of the world. Miss me with that, miss me with that. I'm not buying into your delusion. Candace Owens said it perfectly. She said, if I see someone who's schizophrenic and they think they're Superman, I'm obligated to also believe that they're Superman? I don't think so, no. No, be whoever you want. You need to keep that to yourself, all right? And the use of pronouns is not keeping it to yourself. It's not keeping it to yourself. The word they already means something. It means plural. It doesn't mean a mentally ill person who needs so much attention that the world has to buy into this and, and, and buy into this delusion. I'm not gonna fucking do it. And so I look at Demi and you would think, what drives me crazy about this, it's like Demi needs more attention. She's one of the biggest celebrities in the world. She needs more validation. She needs more people that she's controlling because that's what these pronouns are. They're a control tactic. I looked up the psychology of the non-binary and everything is unsurprisingly written by non-binary insane people. And the amount of acronyms 
A, F, A, B, C, A, what the fuck? I don't know. I don't bother to learn them. But there's something new that pops up all the time, and that is part of the grift, is because you're constantly trying to destabilize people so that you have power over them. Um, I'm not gay. I'm queer. Well, I'm not queer. I'm gender queer. This, unfortunately, and I do mean that, it is very unfortunate that you think that this is the only card you have to play in society. That is no one's fault but your own. That is no one's fault but your own. You could have the card to play of actual power, power that is born of expertise, hard work, influence, beauty. But ooh, ooh, that seems like a lot of work. So I know, what's a shortcut to power? Ah, uh, it's guilt. Now, if you're in the Chalantourage, you know my relationship with guilt. I don't have one. I don't feel guilt. I'm just not one of those people. And that allows me to see what these kinds of con artists are doing so clearly and so immediately and so intolerably. Because we're not fucking doing this. We're not doing this. Gender dysphoria, they say, is caused by peer influence and social contagion. Social contagion. What does that mean? It, what is a contagion? It's like a flu, like a social flu, a trend flu. Now some trends spread like wildfire. We had Barbie summer, right? Which obviously I took part in, look at me. We have things like fanny packs, Pokemon, you know, slang terms. All of these are social contagions that are relatively harmless, but there are some that are very harmful. So starting back in the middle ages in Europe from the 15th to the 17th centuries, there was something called the glass delusion where people, almost always aristocrats, almost always nobility, even a king, thought they were made of glass. And they'd be like, don't touch me! I'm in a glass, don't touch me! They would put iron rods in their clothes so they wouldn't break. They wouldn't touch door frames and they would walk sideways. One princess thought she swallowed a grand piano made of glass and it lived inside her so you couldn't touch her or hug her or it would shatter, it would shatter. This was a great example of a social contagion because it started at the top. It started with kings and nobles and all of this. And people who wanted the clout of a king or a duke or the people who were in this glass delusion but couldn't get the power of a king or a duke, but they're still a noble and they're like, okay, well, I can't get that house. I can't get that power. I can get the glass delusion. I can also say I have this. So this spread like wildfire throughout the aristocracy. And psychologically, they think that it relates to the feeling of powerlessness. You're fragile. You literally have no inner fortitude. And if something squeezes you too hard, you will break. Now let's relate this to the non-binary people, right? What would you say about someone who pretends they don't have a gender? probably because they don't know how to operate the actual gender they have, so they just have no gender. I have a myriad of appliances in my kitchen that I have no fucking idea how to operate. I have one of those ninja foodies. It's like a pressure cooker, a hot, an instant pot, like a air fryer. I have had it for years. I have never turned it on once. I'm terrified of it. I don't know how it works. It's like a space station, okay? That is how, me to the Ninja Foodie, if you know how to operate it, can you please tell me in the comments? Me and the Ninja Foodie are to other people what they are with their gender. I don't know how to operate this. I don't know how to be hot. I don't know how to flirt. I don't know how to get someone to like me. I don't have the guts to figure out if I am a gay or a lesbian person. So I am opting the fuck out of all of this. My gender is so frightening to me. I am disassociating from it completely completely. And you might say, you know what, Shalyn? There's a reason some people disassociate from their gender. They were molested. They were raped. I get that. I get that. But again, you are not allowed to take that trauma and spray it into the rest of the world and berate and cancel and post people and shit on them because they won't buy into your traumatic delusion, into the delusions you have created based on your trauma. That's not fair. That's actually not fair. You know what you're doing? You're creating trauma for other people. You're creating a societal contagion that does create trauma. I feel so sorry for teenagers who are living right now and going through this non-binary fuck shit because when they get to college, when they get out in the world, they're gonna be like, wow, thanks, wow. That was, 
And they're gonna be like a decade behind developmentally in terms of how to use this foodie ninja gender thing. How to flirt, how to do your makeup, how to do your hair, how to weaponize your charm to get what you want from men or men, how to do it with women. Or men, how to do it with other men. I don't know, whatever. Whatever your path is. Taking yourself off that path doesn't mean that you get to the destination further. It just means you don't move at all. And so that's why I have a real problem with this. Because I look at things from an evolutionary standpoint, a psychological standpoint, and I can see the damage that this is doing to society and to individuals. And if you bring it up, you're a this phobic, you're a that phobic. You're fucking right I am, okay? I'm a logic person. And I'm here to make people better. Not to infantilize them. Not to keep them stagnant in their own delusions. And certainly, certainly not to walk hand in hand with those delusions and co-opt them as my own to make them feel better. I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Great, let me into the Supreme Court. Let me argue a case. I feel like a lawyer. Let me fly a plane. Let me do an open heart surgery. What is the difference? And if people tell you there is a difference, again, they're trying to disrupt logic so that they have an upper hand in society, so that they have a card to play. Get a card that matters. That one doesn't matter. Get a card that is actually valid. Get a card of power, expertise, grit, influence, inspiration, beauty, I don't know, something. A pity card, a victim card, that's actually a bully card. That's a bully card. And you don't wanna see what someone like me does with a bully. Because I am a bully. It's in me. You activate it, watch out. And the pushback I get sometimes is, well, that's easy for you to say, look at you. You're like this Barbie clone, this his het. First of all, miss me with these terms, cisgender het. I don't know what these mean, okay? I don't care, I don't wanna know, because again, I am not delusional and I refuse to learn the vocabulary of the delusional. I refuse to learn this language. My life isn't great because it just was handed to me. I created this life, okay? And it is great, but I created it. And I created it every single day. I create it for you guys, you guys watch it. And I just wish these people who were, it's, they're just focused on the wrong things. The she, her, they, it, the, whatever. Put that energy into, if nothing else, the gym. Put that energy into working out and being healthy. Put that energy into cleaning your house. Put that energy into starting that book you want to write. Grow the fuck up. Grow the fuck up. Do you think no one else on planet Earth deals with the things you're dealing with? That, hey, I feel ineffective when it comes to dating. That my body, oh, I hate it. I hate how my body looks. Yes, I know. Welcome to being alive. My ex, Tom, if you're in the Chalantrage, you know all about him. And by the way, the Chalantrage is our community on the internet. You get five bonus videos a week, like deep dives on advice and pep talks. And we talk about fuck boys and like calling guys daddy in bed. It's just like our girl gang. And there's 17 different group chats and we're just like all talking every day. So listen, girl, if you are feeling lost and you think this weird ass non-binary community is gonna give you the love you need, I mean, the, the bad, dumb love. Come get love from alpha females. We'll make you one. We'll turn you into one in like two weeks. Give us two weeks. Your life is going to be different. We got you. And we'll accept you. Come on. Come on in. We can draw your eyebrows back on. It's no big deal. My ex, Tom, alcoholic, drug addict, in and out of rehab. I stuck by him for years. You guys watched. It was a nightmare. And he... He said to me a few months ago that like he just doesn't feel like he has a reason to get up in the morning and a reason to live. And I'm like, yeah, welcome to being alive. Like, I was like, baby, you got to find this. Like, everyone has this problem. And he's like, no, they don't. I'm like, yes, they do. At some point or another, we all are like, why am I here? What am I doing? Who am I? How can I use what I have, and I need to be realistic about who I am and the talents I have and what I look like and whatever. How can I maximize this to get the best possible result out of life and, and society? How can I get the best reactions out of society? And he was like, really? I'm like, yes, yes. Everyone has to figure out a reason for being alive, whether it's your husband or your kids or your job or your dog sometimes or sometimes it's nothing sometimes it's like I just want to see the sunrise or the sunset or get that latte from Starbucks that I know is coming out today and this is the thing with the non-gendered people like 
whatever you're going through, bro, you are actually not unique. And what's beneath there has nothing to do with your puss. It ain't not got nothing to do with your weena. It has to do with you feeling like you don't belong. So, okay, lean into that. Lean, there's nothing wrong with that. Do you understand that's a human condition? Why do you think I have this channel? So that people don't feel alone. Why do you think I made the Shalantourage? So we all have some place where we can fit in and be together and have connections and be friends and get advice and talk. Hello? Like you're not unique. That's the good news. That's the good news. Because whatever is beneath that, baby girl, you got to listen to. You got to listen to and fix. You don't believe me? Why do so many of you guys suicide out then? It's because you're not really looking at the root of what's going on. You're taking medications, you're taking hormones, you're shaving your head, and you're wondering why you're not happier? Hello? Would you look at someone who decided to do meth to cover up a trauma? Would you be like, gee, I don't know why they're not happier and their life is going downhill? Hello? Listen to what your psyche is actually telling you. It's not telling you that your pronouns are it fay. okay? It's not, it's not. You need to be brave enough to look at that. And so Demi, you know what? I don't even wanna talk about Demi. Who fucking cares? Who cares? Marry this dude or don't. She's probably gonna end up divorced. I don't, I don't care, whatever. I wanna talk about us overall and millennials because this is like a millennial thing. You don't hear boomers being like, I too am a they. They're like, what? We're busy ruining fossil fuels and deforesting things. Thank you. You know, I think we have this epidemic of ideology, of latching on to these increasingly niche ideas, whether it's polyamory, okay, man, I mean, all right, or I have no gender, or I have a gender, but I'm gonna chop my tits off and I'm 15 years old, like, or I'm gonna stone someone in the street over Israel, Palestine, or because they didn't get a vaccine. Like we are just living in such an extreme time. And to me, it speaks to how emotionally bankrupt pe people are, how bereft we are on the inside. What is it we want? What is it we're actually after out there? I think part of it is we wanna be heard. We wanna feel like our voice matters. You know what? Then make it matter then make it matter. Shannon, that's easy for you to say you're a YouTuber with a platform. Why do you think I have a platform? Because I have something to say and I make it interesting to hear. I have insight, I have wit, I have these incredible hair extensions that I am just wild about, frankly. So why are we talking about this? Is this just merely a hateful rant from me? Mostly yes. Look, these non-binary, I identify as a fairy, people. It's like, I don't know how many t-ball games your dad had to miss for you to turn out like this. My dad missed them all. And I still know that I have a vagina. Okay. And I can do my hair. Thank you. Why are these people for, I think we've explored why they're triggering because they're delusional. And it's like, well, I don't get to be, I don't get to live in a delusion. I don't get to live in the delusion that I'm a doctor or a lawyer or a pilot or an astronaut or a cocker spaniel. Okay. So I'm sorry, it's unfair that you do and that I have to buy into this. Go fuck yourself, okay? I don't even get free coffee at Starbucks. I have no reason that I should get free coffee at Starbucks, but I just, I feel entitled to it. Well, you're not. The reason we're talking about this is because while that's an extreme example, we all have a pronoun. What are you talking about? Okay. We might not all be the kind of lunatic that identifies as, you know, a, a caca and a or whatever. But I think we all have a tendency when we are in psychological pain to do whatever we can to avoid it. I know, no, I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna look right at that. You don't believe me? When was the last time you Snapchatted your ex? Mm, okay, yeah. How about when you poured a glass of wine? Oh. Were these times of pain or stress? Now those are fairly benign examples, but the fact that pretty much all of us have done that at some point in our life, we've walked into someplace, I need a fucking drink. Or like, you know what, I really can't. Today is horrible, I need some attention, boop. The fact that we have all done this means that this is the human condition. This is what I want these binary people to understand. Again, like I said in the beginning, you're not special. You are merely having an extremely inappropriate reaction to just the continuing horror of being alive that we are all facing. And while I don't think you're going to be calling yourself Kai Kier 
kind or cur self. <laughs> I can't with this, you guys. I fucking can't with this, you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy and paste these as a comment because <laughs> I can't. I don't think you're gonna go do that. Is there something you are doing in your life? Is there something you have imported into your life to prevent you from having to actually look at what is going on psychologically? What is your pronoun? Shallon, I don't do that, okay? Did you know that only about 10 or 15% of people are self-aware? That's not a lot. What does that mean? To me, it, it chiefly defines as can people identify that they are at times their own worst enemy? Can they look at the outcomes in their life and say, I've had a direct influence over this. It is not actually all these forces against me. It's actually not 100% my mom and dad. It's not the fact that Jenny broke up with me sophomore year. Can you look at your life and take some fucking responsibility? Because can you look at your life and see patterns? And if we see patterns, if we are cognizant and brave enough to see patterns, the next step is who is responsible for those patterns? Well, some people will be like fate, God, bad breaks, bad luck, my ex, my parents. Da, 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 da. How often are we like, oh no, no, that's all me. I just keep dating the same kind of person. Or if I date different people, I act exactly the same. And so that's why things keep going belly up. How many people can say that? You can, you can say that. You are someone who is brave enough to say that. To me, there is no one braver in society than someone who can look at their life and be like, fuck, a lot of this is my fault. Not everything, but a vast majority of it, it comes down to me. Why don't people wanna do this? Because with great realization comes great responsibility. Because then what do you have to do? Then you alone have to fix it. If you realize, I'm the problem, it's me. If you realize that, shit. You are obviously, therefore, the only person who can clean it up. A lot of people don't want to realize that. A lot of people don't. People who call themselves a sea sire, seer, seer self, don't want to face up to the knowledge and the truth that like, if you want to have better social influence, you maybe need to act better and look better and be interesting or smart or have power in the many ways that we have already delineated in this video. And the reason we don't want to say that we have control over our life is because the responsibility of changing our life seems overwhelming. It does. It seems a lot easier to call ourselves Lee, Lim, Liss, and Lim self. Lee is already also a thing. It's a Chinese last name. Lim is, I believe, a Korean last name. No, don't come after them. But look, again, the example we used before, if you met someone, they're like, you know, I was molested when I was young. Would you ever say, have you tried meth? Have you tried meth? I feel like that's just really gonna make you not even think about it. You should try meth or heroin. You know, if you like downers, I would definitely go heroin slash fentanyl. No, you wouldn't. You would say, fuck, let's get you into some therapy. Let's get you on like a healthy regime. You know, let's, let's, let's make every system in your life work to benefit you, okay? But are you doing that for yourself? No, you might not be out there doing meth or identifying, I can't stop reading these, as a, as a bun, bun, buns, bun self. You might not be doing that, but are you doing shades of that. There's a lot of different ways to fuck up your life, right? There's a lot of different ways to avoid looking at the psychology and to try to fix your life. But let me tell you, as someone who's done it, as someone who's come out on the other side, when we at least commit to the path of self-awareness, to the therapy, to the healthy eating, to the making our bed every day, to going to bed early, like little things, little things. When we do that, the amount of power we feel cannot compare to the little baby, pathetic, coercive power that the they thems are trying to exert. It's not even fucking close. I am the most powerful person I know. I am. Because I am the most disciplined person I know. I am the most self-aware person I know. I am a monster through and through. I know it, you know? There's good parts, but there's a lot of monster. 
But listen, I go to therapy, I go to the gym, I clean up my house, I work really hard, and I feel invincible. I feel fucking invincible every day because I am strong enough to look the bad things in the face, even if I can't fix them. This is the thing. Please don't think that like, okay, if I look my trauma in the face, what's the point? I gotta fix it now? I, I That's supposed to make it all better? No, no. It just means you have a little bit of mastery over it. That it's not this parasite that's taken over the host and is suddenly working the controls. And when I see the they, thems, that's all I see. Is someone who is so weak, they can't look at what's actually going on in their life or their history or whatever, and just cowboy the fuck up and face it and see if it is something they can fix or make better or make peace with or forgive or move on from or at least deal with in some way. I look at those people and I see weakness. Weakness can stop anytime you want it to. And it doesn't have to be a default setting. So again, while you're not identifying as something absolutely unhinged and insane, what are you doing in your life that is, that is sort of that emotional getaway car? That is taking you out of what you actually need to focus on and just zooming you someplace else? What is it? Drinking, alcohol, that's the same thing. <laughs> Eating, your exes, shopping, gossiping, staying up too late, doom scrolling, TikTok, I don't know. It doesn't have to be a huge, huge, huge thing. It doesn't have to be something that defines your personality like the they, thems do. It can just be something that is a little bit corrosive. It's not part of the solution. It's part of the problem. So listen, I say all of this and the whole point of this video is because we're trying to start a new year off strong, right? We're gonna set resolutions and fuck, we wanna achieve them. We wanna shift into different mindsets and level up and glow up and be happier 52 weeks from now when we look back two weeks from now when we look back. None of that can happen if you're not willing to be a little bit brave. And the bravery is just looking at what's going on, just listening to your psyche. She's trying to talk to you all the time. Just listen to her, what is she saying? I guarantee whatever she's asking is not so impossible. And I also guarantee that whatever it is you wanna be, whatever you want from your life, man, someone out there is doing. Someone out there is doing it. Someone has the body you want, the income you want, the relationship you're after. Someone is doing it. So it's not impossible. Are you brave enough to accept what you want out of life and to make a plan, to make a plan? And listen, maybe you are just at the point where you're like, it is a huge Everest size mountain for me to just admit what I want. Okay, that's great. Give yourself two months to just sit in the admission of, you know what, I wanna go to NYU. I wanna study fashion. Or I actually hate New York City and I wanna move back to my hometown. And I miss my ex. Or I don't wanna be in this relationship. I don't wanna get married. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Allow yourself to sit with it. Allow your psyche to be heard so she can be like, girl, I've been trying to tell you this for like eight months. Thank you. Ha. Ah. Maybe now isn't the time to ramp up and do all these new things. Maybe now is the time to actually slow down and just, girl, just be and just listen and just see what bubbles up and follow that thread without fear, without hesitation. The way you would encourage anybody else to follow that thread. Can you give that to yourself? Can you be good enough and brave enough for yourself to give as much as you would give to somebody else? Can you do that for you? I think that you can. I think that you're brave enough too. Do I think Demi Lovato is? I don't care. I care about you guys. Tell me your thoughts on this. Do you have the same mindset that I do about the, I just gotta read one more. <laughs> this is great. Fawn, fawn, fawns, and fawn self. One more. Ne, nim, niz, nimself. I am done. I am done. I right, see you later, Shalligators. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do a video on Selena Gomez. I just don't know what to say about her and Benny Blanco other than he looks like Andre the Giant, which I feel like we've covered. Don't know what else to say, except he's probably a drug dealer. Okay, we are gonna be back getting ready for the new year with some glow up content. Like I said, let me know what glow up ideas you wanna see and we're gonna do them down below. I'll see you later, Shalligators.